everything has changed. Everything that we know about search has changed. And today, if you want your content to perform in more landscapes than you ever dreamed possible, then you've got to be prepared to go on a journey. And that's because search, for your audience, search is no longer question and answer. And search is no longer a keyword game, and the SERP itself is no longer a single set of search results that you can rely on. And there is no more a question, are we on page one? And if anyone asks, are we on page one? My answer and your answer today is going to be, which page one are you talking about? So what I'm talking about really today is your audience going on a journey, a wonderful journey of exploration and discovery. And it's absolutely critical that you go on that journey with them. And today, we're going to go on a journey. And our journey is going to begin in the SERP multiverse. What is it and how do you navigate it? And then from there, we're going to discover competitors that we never knew existed. And I'm going to show you the time machine that I built that's going to take us into the future. So you can see your very competitors in the future as well, 12 months ahead. And I'll show you the technology we use to do that. We're then going to have to have a conversation thanks to the technology that is taking us to this tipping point that we find ourselves at today. So let's begin in the SERP multiverse. Now, it's a common known fact. And Google will say this, and I'll say it, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. But when people search, they don't really know what they're looking for. So we start with a broad term, a big, fat search term that nobody really wants. So just imagine if I want to get in shape, and I want to lose some weight, and I might start my search journey like this, lose weight. But I don't want to do that. I want to do so much more than that. And it doesn't really matter whether you want to lose weight, whether you want to get ripped, whether you want to buy a new pair of trainers, whether you want a new moisturizer or anything. What's the first thing that happens when you type that into the search bar? Think about that on your phone. What's the first thing that happens with the trophy term? Autocomplete. What's autocomplete? They're not suggestions, but these are predictions based on other successful searches that other people have recently done. Arguably, these autocompletes, and you probably can't read them there, are one step closer to the intent of your audience. Let me use an example. Best trainers. If you walk into a store and say, I want the best trainers, they'll say, well, tell me, what best trainers do you want? Do you want to use them best trainers for the gym? Second floor. Best trainers for men? Top floor. Best trainers for running? You want to go over there. Ladies, they're over there. And each time you go over and look, they're different trainers. The landscape has changed. So with these autocomplete, I've got two critical questions. Question number one, how many people click on these? And I'm not going to ask you guys, because Google tells us. And this is astounding. You know how many people are clicking on autocomplete? Google says it saves the equivalent of 200 years of typing every single day. That's how many people are clicking on these and not actually getting to SERP zero those trophy terms at the top that we're obsessed with. And we're saying, or asking the question, are we on page one? Page one of what? Because hardly anyone is getting there, because you've got to fight your way through autocomplete. The second question, how different are these landscapes? Imagine your audience click on one of those 40 autocompletes. How different are those landscapes to SERP zero that you would get from the trophy term? On average, 95% different. Literally 95%. Sometimes they're 100%. And yet we're still obsessed with SERP zero. And it gets worse. Just imagine that your audience ignore these. Imagine they're one of the people who ignore satellite technology, $100 billion worth of technology in the sky that says, turn left, and you stay on the road, which I did when I drove my son to Durham University the other day. And the sat-nav said, turn off. I said, no, no, no. My son said, turn off. I said, don't worry, buddy, we got this. It cost me two hours. So don't be that person. Imagine, imagine you ignore these wonderful predictions. What's the first thing you see in the SERP? Nothing but doorways. Nothing but doorways. Think about best trainers. Those doorways, best trainers, best classic trainers, best trainers UK, best trainers under 50. Arguably, each one of these is closer to intent. 
because these are longer search terms. They've got more detail. They are going to get you closer to your audience. So even if you get into SERP zero, it's like Google doesn't want you to be there because it's giving you at least 21 on average ways out of there. These are refinements. And I said to a client, and I said to every client, but one in particular a few months back, guys, why don't we track these? Why are we just focusing on the trophy term? Because people are going there. And he said, oh, I don't know. It seems like a load of hassle, a bit of extra work. And I said, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll monitor these refinements, and we'll ask three questions. How different are they? How present are you? And how does your biggest competitor stack up? These are the results. Quite astounding. And it changed their mind. 90% different. 90% different. Somebody clicks on that, they're seeing a SERP that's 90% different to SERP zero that we obsess with. How present are they? They're only there 20% of the time. And they still weren't convinced. What about main competitors? Four times better. Literally four times more present. And in that moment, we decided to do two things. Monitor their presence in those SERPs and try to be more present within those SERPs. And I'll probably feed back and let you know how that went. So we know the SERPs are different, but how does the SERP physically look? Because we're all obsessed with the SERP. And we know that when somebody says, I want to be on page one, what do you need to do? Look at the SERP. Let's compare SERP zero for best trainers with SERP one for best trainers for gym, the SERP matrix. Here we go. Oh my god, that one's boring. It's just classic links, day by day, classic links. But when you go to a new SERP, closer to intent, it's full of richness. We've got answer cards, classic links. People also ask images, top stories, all sorts of wonderful things. And, and we all know, guys, you know it, and everybody's saying it. When you're optimizing a piece of content, look at the SERP. Study people also ask. What is that? but a manifestation of search for intent and answer those questions in your content, but there's nothing there. So don't get caught out by that. If there's nothing there in SERP zero, go to one of these other 21 different doorways and learn from that to be more present. And really, really, analyzing and optimizing in the context of the SERP is one of the first of the four keys of contextual optimization, the context of the SERP. Number two, the competitors. Always optimize in the context of your competitors. And I'm going to show you competitors you never knew existed. So imagine that we've been on a health kick, we've been on a diet, we've lost weight. Let's turn to men's fashion. And if I'm trying to optimize my content for men's fashion, let's look at the competitors today. Is that what we do? No. You've got to go back in time. And that's not my time machine, but you've got to go back in time because it's, it's all very well looking at who your competitors are today, but what we need to do is understand who's there, where they've come from, how long they've been there, and what they've done to get there, and which algorithms were they impacted by. So we go back 12 months, minimum 12 months. Let's look at men's fashion 12 months ago. That's where we start. And I'm calling out two in red. I'm calling out Matalan and Zolando. Guys, you're in the room. I am. I do apologize. But what, why have I called them out? Because when we move forward to today, this is the top 10 in men's fashion 12 months ago. They've gone. They've vanished from the SERP. So my question is, when did they vanish? Was it March 15th? Because if it was, perhaps they're not sending enough double heat signals. And we can learn from that. And we can learn as much, if not more, from competitors of today. Look at those ones in green, those three. We've got Amazon, House of Fraser, love you guys. Okay, John Lewis, sometimes love you if you're in the room. <laughs> Reasons are historic, but anyway, they've gone up. We can learn from that, but not just today and 12 months ago. Look over time. When did those three sites rise? And over the top of this data, we lay an algorithmic pancake consisting of four layers. We have the Google Core Update, Core Web Vitals. We've got the product review or the review update, and we've got the helpful content. And when you layer up, like a pancake, those algorithms over time, we can not just learn who's on page one today, 
but we can learn how they've got there and what signals are they sending to all those amazing algorithms. So I, at this point, I'm going to say the next chart I show you is going to be the future. 12 months' time, maybe nine months. How is that possible? If you'd have asked me, if you'd have asked me six months ago, can you do this? Can you tell us the future? I'd say, no, 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 no. But you know what? Thanks to some technology that has emerged over the past three months to widespread public applause, thanks to this new technology that is changing the very face of search, but is changing the very way that we search. I am, of course, talking about ChatGPT, I'm talking about BARD, I'm talking about new search engines, but I am not yet, I will, I'm not talking about AI. AI comes in superbly in a minute. I'm talking about what's highlighted in green. And if you can't see that, those are the microphones. These search engines are now finally driving voice, voice as the main input mechanism. Intent is the same, but voice. And this, this kind of takes me back to um, something that happened to me that changed my life five years ago. Literally, life-changing moment. And it's to do with voice. And I was walking down, where was I walking? Down Carnaby Street with my son, Charlie. He was 14. He said, Dad, I want a new pair of jeans. I said, OK, buddy, in we go. There's Diesel. I used to shop there when I was your age. In we go. So he's, he's in the changing rooms. The, the assistant's there looking. She's smiling. Why is she smiling? I found out why she was smiling. Look at the price, 150 quid. Mother of God, not a chance. There's no way I'm spending 150 quid on jeans for a 14-year-old. So I've got like 60 seconds to get out of this financial crisis. So I pick up my phone and say, hey, Siri, where can I find a pair of men's black jeans around here for less than 50 quid? And as Siri replies, go to Superdry. It's in Regent Street. I'm turning it down because the assistant's looking at me, <laughs> scowling. Anyway, he comes out, and he's looking good in his jeans. And She's standing there. She's thinking, commission? Yep, yep. Anyway, he says, how do I look pops? And I said, well, I don't know, buddy. Not sure. Why don't we have a think about it? That's what you do. And anyway, we left the store, and she, she, you could see it on her mind. Yeah, you tightwad. You absolute tightwad. But anyway, super dry. We found her jeans. And this wasn't just a, an amazing example of you know, a, 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 an omnichannel shopper who's just you know, changing his mind in the last moment. But I realized then that voice. Voice works. Voice works beautifully. And research that we have done then, and thanks to Bert, thanks to Mum, voice, longer, more ambiguous queries result in better results. Better results. So I mentioned the future. Let's take those 1,000 keywords. And it was on that day five years ago I started tracking voice. And it changed my life. And I hope it's, hope it's going to change yours. So. I mentioned the future. Let's take the 1,000 fashion term keywords and let's get voice equivalents. How do you get those? You get an intern on their summer holiday. You say 1,000 terms. If you're going to search with voice, how would you do it? Oh my God, the dullest job in the world, but they're still on the phone. They still want the summer job back. More on that in a moment. Anyway, let's look at the new chart. Everything in green has changed. What does the landscape of the future look like? 80% different. Those other sites have been replaced, OK, largely by affiliates. But my god, the intent is the same. The people are the same. The input mechanism is different. That's the difference voice is going to make if people, and I think they will, give up the keyword game and adopt this amazing new technology that the search engines are pushing at us. So I think now we need to have a conversation. Now, we looked earlier at the SERP matrix, and we saw how the SERP differs between SERP 0 and one of the SERP 1s, best men's trainers, best men's trainers for the gym. Let's take those 1,000 keywords, and how do they change for voice? Look at the SERP radar, two big differences. People also ask, less of them. Why are there less people also ask for voice? Well, i tell you why, because longer. More ambiguous queries with more detail are one step closer to the intent of the audience. Less questions on their minds. Makes sense. But the answer cards, every time you look at a voice landscape, it's littered with answer cards. They're everywhere. 
And why is this so critical? Why is it so important now? And the question I have to you guys, if any of you are a brand out there, you work for a brand, how can you get in my living room and have a conversation with me in the absence of all your competitors, have a one-to-one -one conversation in an age of voice? The answer's simple. As I ask Siri, what do I do with all my old clothes now I've lost weight? It's get called out. No matter what artificially intelligent, voice-enabled, personal assistant you use, Siri, Alexa, Google Home, just doesn't matter. It's the brand that comes out in the absence of anyone. So that's how you do it. And as I talk up here, as, I, as I'm talking, I can hear, I can almost hear somebody at the back there saying, you nutcase. What, what has this got to do with me? What has it got to do with me? Because I, I'm talking about somebody out there, I'm talking about a men's fashion retailer or a global fashion retailer that was number four in that previous competitor discovery chart. Not the voice one, the other one. Number four. And probably thinking, I'm doing really rather well. What does all this matter? Well, let's take 1,000 keyword terms for men's fashion and plot it. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Until you get to the 15th of March. I'd love to go into more detail, but they've obviously been penalized by Google's core updates. And you think there'd be a bit of panic there. I know there's panic. I know these guys. And there's a lot of panic. But not as much panic as they're going to experience if their audience stop doing this keyword game and start doing this. Hey, where can I find the best men's blazers this summer? Or where can I find a nice pair of brown brogues around here that are in fashion right now? Let's take a look at their performance. 33% drop in visibility, equally with traffic, equally with revenue. That bottom line there is their performance for queries with the same intent, but their voice. And if people do adopt this technology, they've probably got about 12 months maximum, or that top line is going to merge into the second one and bring it together. And speaking of bringing it together, speaking of bringing it together, what do we need to do? OK, we need to monitor our performance in three new types of landscapes. Number one, not just monitor, but be present, the landscape before SERP zero, the autocomplete landscape that we know is 95% different and stopping our audience from getting to SERP zero that we obsess with, number one. Number two, the landscape that emerges from SERP zero, the autocompletes, the refine my search, etc. 90% different. All of those other landscapes that our audience are in and we're not present in. And thirdly, the landscape of voice, the beautiful landscape of voice that I love. Now, how do we do that? How do we, let's just talk about voice for a moment. How can we get all of those voice equivalent keywords? Remember the intern? Remember the intern? Intern's still on the phone. Intern's still on the phone. But hold on for a second. Why don't we use the very same technology that has brought us to this tipping point? And right now, I'm going to break all the rules of good presentations, including going over by two minutes. Sorry. I'm going to break all the rules, because the next slide, and my team, who I've already told, never put too many words. It's got loads of words on it. <laughs> and the second rule, I'm going to read the words. There is a time and a place. And if I had a button to dim the lights and move the curtains, I would begin like this, with a bedtime story. I said, just shut your eyes, everyone. Please don't read the words, but just listen along with me. Close your eyes. And the story begins, Dear Chat GPT. I'm going to give you a list of keyword search queries. This is my prompt. I would like you to imagine that you are the person searching Mr. ChatGPT or Ms. ChatGPT, but instead of using the keyboard, you can only use your voice. Interns shaking. OK, you can add more description, but they should be no more than 12 words. Why 12? Because the research we did with the University of Hertfordshire proved that voice max is out at 12. So some academic rigor here. Can I give you an example? ChatGPT says, yes. Give me an example. Here you go. Here you go, buddy. OK, men's trainers, old school, boring, last year, keyword game. Instead, what are the best men's trainers this summer? Cut a long story short, 1,000 keywords in. Beautiful. Intern takes a week. OK, this one. 
people, men's shirts. Show me the latest trends in men's shirts for this season. And the amazing thing about this is you can say, OK, we're moving into autumn. Shape it for autumn. 1,000 keywords for autumn. God, all that time saving. Winter, men's gifts, women's gifts. And suddenly we've got all these new banks of keywords of the future that is right around the corner. Intern still on the phone. <coughs> Losing my voice. Sorry. So excited. Tell the intern, I've got rid of you. I don't need you anymore. I've replaced you with a machine. And I finally get to say, it really is the rise of the machine that we are going to use to embrace this tipping point that we have finally got to. So I just in the last 60 seconds, my takeaways. Oh my goodness. <sighs> just calm. Calm for a second. God, I'm so excited. Anyway, uh, key takeaways. OK. I was wrong in Dallas. Did I mention Dallas? I think I forgot. When I stood up there at State of Search and said, it's the tipping point for voice. And they all said, you're a nutcase. Get off. Except Dr. Pete. Anyone knows Dr. Pete who's been around in search long enough? He said, I think you're onto something. But we are at the tipping point because the technology and the microphones are there and the keyboards have shrunk. Don't obsess with SERP Zero. Your audience can't even get there. And if they do, they're out. Track and learn from all SERPs. And try to be present in multiple doorways in multiple SERPs, not just one. Oh my god, it's like a gift, those other SERPs that have been around us all the time. And then just before I get hauled off, just before, I am running a SERP search masterclass with four topics. We're going to cover this, loads more, starting with the basics. There's a QR code. Probably can't scan it, but I think on your seat you might find a leaflet. Thank you, Holly. Ollie's the one that put those there. So, um, and finally, all the charts and all the data and everything I did today were brought to you by PyData Metrics. Um, and if anybody wants to talk about how we got this data and you're interested in voice or anything like that, or you're interested in just amazing data, then come and speak to me or one of my team after. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm so, so grateful. So grateful. Need link building or content? Go to fatjoe.com. On-demand marketing services for agencies and teams. Fat Joe.